Oui. Mmh. Pasar, 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 touch, 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 touch. Good. <laughs> yeah, promiň. A už šovnej, jo? Už, se, už se trošku řítíme do toho, tak... Dobrý, dobrý, dobrý. Na obecně na lodi musí hrozně předvídat a říct, jak kdyby zbytoval auto, že jo? Prostě, no, jasně, no. Je to furt ve Dobrý. Macha, toč, toč, toč. Mám video, tak mi to malat. <laughs> okay, guys. So, welcome to Gdańsk. We made it. We made it to the main town of Gdańsk. This is the first important information. Part of the city which is behind me is not called Old Town. Most people think it's Old Town, but it's not. It's Main Town. What is the difference between Old Town and Main Town? We have Old Town in Gdańsk, but it's more this way. It's in the area of the railway station. I don't know if you've been in the railway station, but that part of Gdańsk is called Old Town. So what is the difference between Old Town and Main Town? Of course, Old Town is the oldest part. This is the second oldest part. So the first city was built, the first city, the first settlement was built more or less in the area of the railway station. But because of the Viking raids, they had to move the city a little bit more to the south. And this was the second settlement, the Main Town. So the most important fa fa fact in Gdańsk, the part which looks old is not called old. And the part which is called old doesn't look old. Very simple. So guys, this, but still, main town is guys about 1,000 years old. During this 1,000 years, Gdańsk changed ownership many times. Today it's a Polish city, 
if you would come here before World War II, 9% of the population was Polish. Most people who lived here were German, but the city was not German. It was, it was independent. It, was a, it had a status of a free city. Before that, it was a German city for 200 years. Before that, it was a Polish city for 200 years. Before that, it was ruled by the Teutonic Order. Before that, it was Polish. So it was changing many, many times. Uh, if you would come to Gdańsk in 17th century, most citizens were Dutch. So not Polish, not German, but Dutch. One thing never changed in Gdańsk, and this is a fact that this city was always very, very rich. Rich because of few things. First thing, of course, connection with the sea, so it was a harbor, right? Second, trade. People were coming here from all over Europe or even from all over the world to sell, to buy. So that's why the city became rich. But the main reason why Gdańsk was rich was actually the river. Not this river. This river is called Motuava. It's a smaller river in Gdańsk. The most famous river in Gdańsk, but a smaller one. If we would go a little bit that way, guys, there is another river. I will tell you about it later as well, because we will see it. It's called Vistula. Vistula River, guys, is the biggest river in Poland. It flows through the whole country. Krakow, Warsaw, Gdańsk, all these cities are next to the river. And in the past, the river was the main trading route. So most cargo was transported through the river. Mm -hmm. Cargo like cereal, for example. So Gdańsk, which was at the end of the river, put a tax on every product which went through the city, which was basically every product which went from Poland somewhere by the sea. And that's how the city made loads of money. How much money? When Krakow was the capital of Poland in the beginning of 16th century, the annual budget of Gdańsk was 10 times higher than the budget of Krakow even if Krakow was the capital. So a lot of money, and until today you can see some signs of how rich the city was. I really recommend to check out the building called the Great Armory. Great Armory, so the building which was a warehouse for weapons, right? This is where they stored the weapons. It looks like a palace of an aristocrat full of gold ornaments and so on. Why? Because they could, because they could afford it. That's the main reason, um, the main reason why. So guys, in Gdańsk we have a lot of things. We have beautiful buildings, we have bridges, boulevards, we have a huge church and so on. But we are missing one thing, one thing which medieval city should have. And I'm talking here about a castle. We don't have a castle in Gdańsk. But we had a castle, but the last castle was took down about 500 years ago. The castle stood here, more or less where these buildings are. So the castle stood here until 500 years ago. I told you that the city was ruled by the Teutonic Order. It was ruled for 150 years. And you have to know that the Teutonic Order Knights, they were really unpopular here in Gdańsk. They took the city by a trick and also they murdered half of the citizens after they took the city. So they were really unpopular, but they ruled Gdańsk for about 150 years. After this 150 years, the citizens decided this is enough we are organizing an uprising against you. So there was an anti-Teutonic uprising, which succeeded. They, get rid, they got rid of the Teutonic guys from the city and the castle, which was left, it was took down by the citizens brick by brick because they didn't want to have any symbol of the Teutonic Knights. And that was the only castle which was ever here and it was took down 500 years ago. Since then, we never had a castle. So there are two things which are left after the castle. The first thing, you will see it more clearly in the second, on the right, there will be a piece of a wall. Piece of the wall of the castle. And another thing which you can see, it's right now exactly behind you guys. Uh, unfortunately, I will try to turn us a little bit more so we can see it. Hold, hold. Hold there as well. <laughs> So there is a canal going into the river, guys. Now you can look to the left. Uh, a little bit more. A little bit more. Oh, now you can look to the left. And we have a canal. Canal going into the river. This is Radunia River Canal. Radunia River is another river in the area. It actually flows into Motuava River before it reaches Gdańsk. But the canal was built by the Teutonic Knights uh, to supply the castle with the drinking water and also to supply, supply a nearby meal with the energy. The ne near, nearby meal uh, is not far from here and today there is an amber museum inside. If you are looking for a museum which is not Hard, like <laughs> World War II Museum just here or the Solidarity Center. Amber Museum is a perfect choice. What else we have? There? So in, in Gdańsk there are a couple of islands and the first island I want to tell you about is behind you. This is all the island. Uh, island is called Lead Island, Ołowianka. Because in the past, on the island, materials like lead were stored. Not only lead, but mostly lead. So that's where the name comes from. So this is one of the islands. When you look to the right, you have this big building made out of bricks there. Do you see that? 
So it was the per first power plant of Gdańsk. But today, this is a Polish Baltic Philharmonie. So one of the main institutions like this in the country. And another story I want to tell you, another building I want to tell you about. The, the one with the chimney. So guys, this building, it, will, it is a pumping station for the sewer system of Gdańsk and half of the sewer system of Sopot. Don't forget, guys, we have three cities here. In Poland, this part of Poland is called Tri-City. So there is Gdańsk, Sopot and Gdynia. And actually, when you move around, you don't really see that you change the city, you know? It's all connected. So this pumping station is responsible for one and a half city out of three, let's say. Let's, let's, uh, let's uh, explain it like this. I tell you this story, not because it's like a super interesting story that there's, this is a pumping station, but pumping station next to the river, sometimes the smell here is pretty bad, especially on the other side. We'll be coming back on the other side of the island, so you will smell what I'm talking about. I tell you this because we are kayakers, guys. We touch the water, but the smell comes from the pumping station, not from the water. Water is clean enough so you can swim in it, so you can touch it. You cannot drink it, obviously, but it's not like it's poisonous, you know? Even if you will smell something bad, it comes from this building, not from the river, the sewers. Don't go to the river anymore, at least, you know? If you would come here in the Middle Ages, I will tell you about it later as well. Okay, guys, any questions? No questions. So what we will do, uh, we will enter the city, guys. We stay on the right, but the next stop will be on the left. I will tell you at some point, and we will cross all together the river, all right? Hold the kayaks, hold the kayaks together. I will turn us around before. So, first of all, let's look, let's look here, guys. Now, when you look at Gdańsk from this perspective, you have the boulevard, it's under renovation, but you see the buildings, you can, you can see some German writing on the buildings as well, because it, the buildings are reconstructed, guys, like everything in Gdańsk, but to give you, like, to, to, to show what kind of services were here before World War II, of course, the writing, you know, reminds that. So you can see the buildings, right? If you would come here a few hundred years ago, guys, and you would look at the city from this perspective, you couldn't see the, the city because there were city walls going into the river. So the city was behind the walls. The only way to enter the city was through one of nine water gates. That was a water gate here on the right, guys. You see the gate in the middle, in the bottom part of this building? Yes, that was a water gate. That was another water gate as well. A little bit further where the crane is, that's another water gate. So that's very important. This is something which was built late, like the, the walls later were took down and the buildings were also constructed next to the river. But in the past, it was part of the fortification system of the city. So the city was really hard uh, to conquer. Remember that, we will, we will talk about the water gates a little bit more later. But here, I also want to tell you about this beautiful ship, Polish Titanic, uh, called Sodek, very famous ship. You know, in Poland, we love to compare ourselves to others. So when we have a ship like this, it's suddenly Polish Titanic, you know. When we have a pop singer, he's suddenly <coughs> Polish Harry Styles or something like this and so on. So it's always Polish something. This is Polish Titanic. So guys, Sodek, it's a very famous ship because this is the first ship fully produced in Poland after World War II. So this ship was opened in 1948. Do you remember the, uh, when we started the tour, the place where you entered the kayaks, there was, there was like a slide into the water next to it. So the whole area, it was a shipyard. So the slides were used to put ships into the water after they were finished in the shipyard. This ship was put into the water exactly in the place where we started the mm -hmm. tour. So it was put in the water in 1948 and uh, it was an active ship until 1980. During this time, it went on about 1,600 cruises uh, to about 70 different harbors and it carried about three and a half million tons of cargo. So it is a pretty, it was a pretty good, experienced ship. It's retired since 1980, so for a while now. Um, it was a cargo ship as well, of course, and it was powered by steam. So inside there was an oven, there is an oven. You put coal, coal burns, creates a steam, and the ship is moving forward. How much coal you have to put to make this ship move? So guys, one ton of coal per hour. <laughs> Not very ecological ship, I would say. <laughs> the coal was put into the oven by two men on the shift, which was four hours. So two men were putting four tons of coal into the oven in four hours. 
not the best job, but you know, in the past that was a job. You know, at least uh, you had any type of job. So guys, uh, the, net, the men who were working like this, they were called guitarists. We know this because we had a Polish guy on the tour a while ago, an uh, older guy who wanted to work on the ship when he was younger, as a guitarist. And he told us that these people were called guitarists. Why guitarists? So this was a very, very hard job. So the shovels they used, they were personalized. They were adjusted to your height, to like how wide your arms were. They were only for you, which means that you never borrowed the shovels, like you never borrowed the guitar as a guitarist, right? Mm -hmm. Second thing, after a four hour shift, they took the shovels and they were hiding the shovels in the cases, just like the guitarist as well. So the shovels are not damaged, like somewhere in the meantime, let's say. So that's why guitarists. Another thing is the name of the ship. It's called Sodek. What does it mean, Sodek? It sounds a little bit like a surname. And the full name is Stanisław Sodek, which means sounds like a full name, and it is a full name, guys. Stanisław Sodek was one of the workers who worked during the production of this ship in the shipyard in 1940, late 40s, after World War II. So he wore, it was in communism, and it was like in the most intense part of communism in Poland. So this guy was a so-called work leader, which means that he did 206% of norm, twice more than others. And of course, people like this were respected very much in communism. So to reward him, the, name, the ship was named after him. To show, look, he worked hard, he did twice more than others. Now we name the ship after him, even if he's just a random worker, you know, and nobody heard about him. So that was the official version of the story. The unofficial version is, the guy, it was in communism, it was pure propaganda, guys, to, to show other workers that you have to work hard and look what will happen. The guy was a work leader, it is true, but also he was like a hardcore supporter of a communist party. Mm. So probably that's why he was named, the ship was named after him. Uh, that's one thing. Second thing, it never happened again. Not even like one ship was named after <laughs> some worker. Uh, so this is the only ship like this. Uh, so it was just pure propaganda. Still, the ship is a very nice thing to place to visit. Today it's a museum. It's not the first choice museum for people, uh, but I really recommend it. It takes like one hour, maybe one hour and a half to walk around. Everything is original. You can ring a bell as well. You'll hear it in a second probably. So it's really, uh, oh, you see guys, they are really motivated. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, I recommend. I really recommend to check out the ship as well, uh, even if it's just a museum. I think it's pretty really cool. Yeah. Also, on the back, maybe you saw it was written Sodek Szczecin. Szczecin is another city in Poland that doesn't exist. I talked with some of you. Uh, we have this joke in Poland that Szczecin doesn't exist. Uh, but Szczecin, why Szczecin, not Gdańsk? Because we are in Gdańsk. The ship was produced in Gdańsk, but it was produced for the harbor in Szczecin, which was like a mother harbor of the of the ship. It was only produced uh, produced here. Uh, okay guys, any questions? No questions. So, we will continue now guys. Maybe let's wait a second, because probably this ship will start in a minute. Uh, okay, so we can go. So we can go guys. Okay, so follow me. We won't stop now next to the crane. We will go further and we will stop next to the crane when we will be coming back, alright? So follow me. Let's go.